If you caught the last video about this, you know, I didn't have the drywall on here. I've since got it all on there. I did it, I didn't record any of it. Just wanted to get it done because I don't like doing drywall work. Now I want to mention real quick as we get started here, and I've said this before, but this firebox is not my favorite. It is not the most traditional looking. I had this idea of which one I wanted. We went and we were looking at them and we agreed that this one was better for where we're at in life right now. This one has a screen and then like two and a half inches away from there it has a glass and it just keeps little kids and pets away from this thing. <laughs> <laughs> and literally the first day I fired this up the kids were playing with like the soft pillow type soccer ball down here kicking it around and the first kick not even joking it went it hit the screen so if this was open and exposed like I wanted that thing would have been a fireball so yeah uh, they outnumber us there's five of them two of us so we kind of got to make some decisions based on them <laughs> Now this plywood here is something I was going to leave here and just adhere my marble to, but I've decided against that because it is combustible. I'm going to replace it with cement board. Gonna do a little dry fit on these, make sure they're good. All oh, right here, that one's probably good too. But I'm not gonna put these in yet. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring that marble hearth right here that's gonna be sunk into the floor. And I'm going to go ahead and get that in position and mark around it. Now, this mark doesn't have to be exact because I'm gonna have that piece of flooring that's gonna trim it out. But I wanna get it kind of roughly where I want it and then when I get to that flooring part though, then I have to be like dead on. So I got my cut with the track saw as close as I could to the wall and now I need to get the multi-tool in there and finish that cut. I'll spare you that sound. It's one of the most annoying tools, uh, but uh, I'll time-lapse that part and then we'll jump to prying these boards out. So we're gonna dry fit this in and make sure, I mean, I know there's plenty of room, but I just wanna make sure everything checks out before I get that adhesive on it. Cause once you put that adhesive, I mean, there's no going back. Right there, okay. right there. Okay. And this can go back here like that. Bam. I think, well, the good thing is it takes a minute for this stuff to set. 
And what we really need to figure out is if our side pieces are lined up. It's lined up good. And then I can, I'm just going to check my other one. If there's any like, if it's a little long, I'll just split the difference. No, that looks, that looks like it right there. So I'm going to use these to weigh it down. I know it already has some weight to it. But it does slide easily. So I'm just going to put some weights on it. And we're going to let it dry. So with our marble in, the next thing, of course, is to put our cement boards in. Just put them right here. Oh no, there's a large amount of dust as you saw that comes out of this material when you screw into it. So I'm gonna go ahead and vacuum as I attach this next piece. That's a lot of glue. Oh, I put it on the front. Just kidding. <laughs> that would have been bad. I know you're supposed to use like some kind of epoxy, but this is what we've got. Moment of truth. Had several of those today. Oh, it really grabs. I can't even pull it off. Yay. I'm trying to pull it off. Nice. All right, guys, it has been a couple days now since we've installed these pieces of marble. Of course, we've got our hearth installed in our surround and adhesive is dry. You can see I have my fire on here. So I chose for this traditional mantle, which we have the foundation for, I chose to do this cross-fitted corner detail, which is where you have this lintel hang over your post however much. I just did two inches because on the houses I've worked in, I've measured how much it hangs over and some were two inches. And I like the way that looked. This is, like I said, the foundation for a classic mantle. I think it's gonna be awesome. And I, what I love about fireplaces and fireplace mantles when they're done right with millwork is that the fireplace is always the focal point of the room. There's just no doubt about it. If you have a fireplace in that room, design architect is usually like, all right, this is our focal point. And with that focal point and what, you know, millwork has done to fireplaces and, you know, craftsmen of the past especially, is they've expressed their understanding of architecture through fireplace mantles. That's why I love mantles. I've toured and seen historic houses and I always sit there and just obsess over the mantles. So I want to make one for myself. And here we have the beginnings of that. Next video, we will be laying out, chalking out our lines for this whole over mantle and mantle itself, and then figuring out what trim we're gonna use around this cross fitted marble detail, and then what plinth block, so then we can cut out exactly where our floor needs to go, 
because obviously, as you can see, I just rough cut this out. I'm gonna have a piece of white oak flooring, probably two, two and a half inches, trim that out, and that'll look super clean. But that depends on my plinth block, which depends on the trim that I use, and we'll get into all of that in the next video.